25. Status check. Go, Alice. Go, Centaur. Go, Sivers. T minus 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the third space based infrared system for the United States Air Force. And we start a closed loop control. On Atlas PU, the engine continues to operate normally. You are hearing the voice of Rob Gannon providing launch vehicle ascent data. 30 seconds into the mission, everything works good. The engine continues to operate at 100% thrust. Vehicle is flying right down the center of the range track. Normal control on the PU system. Good engine operating pressures. And we're seeing expected disturbances in flight control for atmospheric flight. Everything looks good. Coming up on Mach 1 in 10 seconds. And we're continuing to fly right down this another range track. Vehicle is now supersonic. Everything is looking good. We are 7.8 miles in altitude, 3.6 miles downrange, traveling at 1,700 miles per hour. And we've throttled down to 95% right on time. And we are venting the center LH2 tank as expected. Levels look good. Engine continues to operate as expected. Passing through two minutes into the mission, everything looks good. And we are now 50% of our liftoff weight. seconds in, everything looks good. Engine continues to operate percent thrust as expected. And we followed the RCS power valve, pressurizing the reaction control system on the second stage. That booster continues to operate normally. Seeing good engine pressures. Continuing to fly right down the center of the range track. 31 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange, traveling at 5,100 miles per hour. And we've got closed loop steering. We've throttled down to 92%, right on time. And vehicle continues to actively steer. Good engine pressures at 92%. And the vehicle now weighs 25% of what it did at liftoff. And we're now flying a constant 5G throttle segment. Everything looks good. Coming up on Beco and staging. Less than 10 seconds away from Beco. We have booster engine cutoff, normal shutdown, and we have stage separation, and boost phase chill is accomplished as expected to pre-start on locks and fuel. Everything looks good. Ignition, full thrust. The all 10 is up to full thrust. Everything looking good. Coming up on fairing separation, and we have fairing separation right on time. 
center continues to operate as expected. 100 miles in altitude, 304 miles downrange, traveling at 16,000 miles per hour. Correction, 11,000 miles per hour. and thruster loop. We're seeing very good steady state operating pressures on the main engine. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 5 minutes 29 seconds. Rob Gannon just confirmed the successful completion of the early phase of today's flight and all systems continue to operate nominally. The mission is currently in the first of two Centaur engine burns. Our next event, Centaur main engine cutoff, will occur in approximately 10 minutes. In the telemetry system, minimal dropout in data. Engine parameters look good. Still nice and smooth. Five minutes to Miko 1. Two hundred ten miles in altitude, fourteen hundred fifty miles downrange, traveling at thirteen thousand six hundred miles per hour. And we see Centaur PU correcting out, looking good. mass area coming down to around zero, and we're off to stop. Everything looks good. We are seeing the expected change in engine operating parameters as we change the mixture ratio on the engine. Four minutes to Miko 1. Center up here is in active control. And flight control disturbances are right as expected. Very smooth. Eighteen hundred miles down range, traveling at fourteen thousand seven hundred miles per hour. This Three is minutes. Atlas Mission Control at T plus twelve minutes thirty two seconds into the third Sibbers Geo flight. The Atlas Centaur second stage and Sibbers Geo Flight 3 satellite are currently located over the Atlantic Ocean east of Antigua. Our next event, the first Centaur main engine cutoff, or MECA-1, is scheduled to take place in about three minutes. Once again, here's Rob Gannon. Engines operating right at the expected steady state levels. We see the thermal conditioning firings on the reaction control system. They have brought all loop temps to essentially the bottle temperature as expected. We're seeing minimal requirements for roll control on the RCS system. Two minutes to make a one. Center PU continues to control nominally. Bus battery voltages are steady, right as expected. We're continuing to see very good telemetry data.
and engine pressures are shifting as expected as we change MR due to PU control. One minute to make our one. Following Miko 1, we will have a nine and a half minute coast duration to the second burn. Second burn anomaly will last three minutes, 40 seconds. We will then have a little over a 15 minute coast duration to spacecraft separation. We're inside of 30 seconds to Miko 1. Continue to see very good performance out of Centaur. 10 seconds to a nominal Miko 1. And we have cutoff. Normal shutdown. Within a couple seconds of our nominal timeline, 4S engines are on. And venting propellant tanks as expected. And IIP has vanished. And we've begun our turn to MS2 attitude. As we approach main engine start two, we expect to, we will be increasing pressures in the propellant tanks. We will then conduct a 23 second LH2 pre start, followed by nine seconds of Fox triple, trickle chill, which will switch over to full flow chill at four seconds prior to engine start. Inside of two minutes to MES. And we're pressurizing propellant tanks. Inside of one minute, to MES2. Restart sequence continues to execute normally. We're going to the start position and center PU. LH2 pre start. And the valve is open. Tank housing temperature is dropping. Clocks pre start right on time. Bypass closed. Ignition. Both rust. L10 is up and running normally. This will be a approximate 3 minute 40 second burn duration. PU has been enabled.
Uh, everything is looking good. As Rob Gannon just reported, the Centaur main engine has been restarted for the second of two Centaur engine burns. This burn will last approximately three minutes. The Atlas V continues to travel in a southeasterly direction. Following our next event, Miko 2, or cutoff of the Centaur RL-10 engine, the Atlas V will cross over the African continent, where the trajectory will switch to an easterly heading. Separation of the Sibbers Geo Flight 3 satellite will occur over the Indian Ocean, east of Madagascar. Listen in as Rob Gannon reports the next MARC event. Everything looks good. Good at steady state operating pressures. Tank pressures look good. Bottle pressure looks good. Minimal wall control is being re required during the burn. Two minutes to Miko 2. Second burn continues to execute normally. Engine pressures look good. PU looks good. The other vehicle systems right as expected. One minute to Miko 2. Vehicles performing right as expected. Thirty seconds to make go two. Engine pressures are nice and steady. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds to make two. Cut off. We have Miko two. Slightly early, indicating both nominal performing second stage. Forest engines are on. Engine is beginning to maneuver. Reorient to sub attitude. We're starting up a PTC roll of minus one degree per second. And this will be a 15 minute to 12 second. Coast to spacecraft separation. Thirty seconds to spacecraft separation. We've completed the solar vector roll. Next event we're looking for is spinning up to one degree per second for spacecraft separation. And we've begun spin up. Coming up on spacecraft separation. We have spacecraft separation. Both brake wires indicate a good separation. Uh, vehicle is de-spinning from its PTC roll.